Hello, my friends. So I'm Clover, and I have something kind of interesting for you today. So if you've been following us for a while, you're aware that it is very, very rare for Gas to ever have special events or guest setters, anything along those lines. But that is exactly what we have today. Um, Philip is taking a little bit of time away from the channel. He's he's doing fine, by the way. He's just taking a real short break. He'll be back soon. And instead of Philip, we've had a friend of the channel, James Sinclair, step in for this week to post a couple of puzzles for you guys. James is best known for Artisanal Sudoku, artisanalsudoku.substack.com. It is his newsletter that he's been doing for quite a while now. And honestly, if you enjoy gas, you should probably go check that out and consider subscribing to it. Just because very similar to my and Philip's and Bill's Patreons, he tends to post primarily things that are at kind of that gas plus difficulty level, which makes it a really, really nice natural jumping off point for people who have been with us for a while and want to explore and go a little bit deeper into the world of handcrafted Sudoku puzzles. So anyways, James has been kind enough to agree to step in for, for a couple rotations with us, and this is the first of his gas puzzles. James actually made one appearance in gas before on April Fool's Day 2024, where he was one of our uh, guest setters for Gas Who. Um, so if you're not familiar, go check out Bill's video laying all of that out. But this is his first kind of official gas puzzle, and let's check it out. So, normal Sudoku rules apply. So we're placing the digits one through nine, once each in each row, each column, and each outline three by three region. And then we also have two variants here. We have killer Sudoku, meaning that we have some cages in the grid and digits cannot repeat in cages. And in each cage, the digits have to sum to the small number in the top left corner. And then we also have thermometers. And digits along a thermometer have to increase starting at the round bulb end and going along the thermometer. And they don't necessarily have to increase consecutively, they just have to get bigger at every step. So let's give it a try. So James has given us a couple of cages that only can be filled in one way. Three cage and two cells is always one plus two, that's minimal. 23 and three cells is one you might not be as familiar with, but here it is. It is always six, eight, and nine. Seven and three cells is always going to be one, two, and four. And I don't see any others immediately that only have one way to fill them, but I do see what my jumping off point is, which is these two thermometers. So here, this thermometer is linked four, and if we have to increase starting at this end, then the absolute smallest this number could ever be would be four, but because of the cage, that's also the absolute biggest it could ever be. So that's a four which makes these digits one, two, three, four, and which tells us what way around this three cage goes. We have, um, as is very common in gas, a symmetrical deduction up here. The absolute smallest this could be due to the cage is six, but the absolute biggest it's allowed to be by the thermometer is going to also be six. So we have to place a six. So now let's see what else we have. So I've noticed now that I have a one and two in column one, and I also have a thermometer that starts in column one, and that's very interesting to me um, because this is going to be the smallest number on the thermometer, and the smallest it's allowed to be at this point is three. So that's going to be three, four, or five. We're going to use our little trick where we look at the length of the thermometer. It's a length five thermometer, and we're going to subtract that from 10, and that will tell us kind of how many degrees of freedom we have. So we're going to go up to potentially five with this because 10 minus five is five. And that's going to be four, five, or six, five, six, or seven, six, seven, eight, seven, eight, or nine. So we can already eliminate eight and nine here because we have an eight and nine in the column. So this is actually fixed already. And because the three is in a 12 cage, that makes this a nine. Three plus nine is 12. That nine will give us an eight and a nine here. The next place I want to go is the 16 cage. If I subtract nine from 16, that tells me that I need to place a total of digits that sum to seven in the remainder of that cage, but I don't get to use one or two. So one plus six is out, two plus five is out, so it's gotta be three plus four. So there's my answer for that. And then the last place I have to go with the thermometers is down here. Let's see what we can do with this. So I have one and two already in this column. And that makes me really suspicious. So I'm actually just, I'm not even going to try to, to, to pencil mark all of the possibilities here. I'm just going to start with the lowest possibilities. The lowest this could ever be was three. 
then that would make this four, five, six, seven. And if you look at that, that is actually also maximal because this can't go bigger than seven since it's in an eight cage. So that does have to be exactly seven, making this a one and resolving the order of the two and one. So now we have a 10 cage and we have a one in it already, which means the remaining two digits sum to nine. And again, we have this very cute symmetry up here where it's not kind of perfect symmetry, but there's this symmetry to how we have to think about our next move where we have to sum these to nine. Normally that would be pretty unrestricted, but because we already have a two and a three in the region, we can't use two and seven, we can't use three and six. Of course we can't use one and eight, so we must be going four plus five. And then from there, let's go to this 10 cage. One thing about a 10 cage and two digits, and you'll also see this in, um, in Sudoku that uses like X's to indicate sums of tens. You'll see the same kind of move. Keep in mind, it has to always have exactly one low digit, one, two, three, four, and exactly one high digit, six, seven, eight, nine. So even if those aren't both like mutually restricted, if you can point out a way in which just the low digits are restricted or a way in which just the high digits are restricted, that gives you kind of a shortcut to figuring out what the other digit has to be. So here our low digits are very restricted. We can't use one, three, or four. There's only one option left for a low digit here and it's two. So this has got to be a two plus eight cage and the eight resolves which way around it's going to go. So now we've at the very least penciled in everything that we get out of the variance. So let's move on to doing some classic Sudoku. So where am I going to go with this? This column is nearly full. I still need a four, five, and six, right? I already have a four and six in this region, so that's my five. I have a four here, so that's going to make this my six, and then that's my four. These rows, top and bottom rows, are also pretty restricted, so what do I still need to fill in here? I definitely still need a six, and there's six in this region already, blocking six out of these cells, so six will go right there. And then these are going to be at seven and nine. And then if I go here, okay, I still need a six, an eight, and a five. And the six, once again, can't go in those cells. So there's my six. And then these two cells are going to contain five and eight. So now these regions are starting to fill up. So let's see what else goes here. So I still need a one, two, and three in this region. And I still need a two, a five, and an eight here. And five rules five out of those cells, placing a five here. That will give me my eight and my five. That's, that's a really cute little flourish. I like that a lot. And that will resolve a lot of stuff for me here. So now let's maybe move to the middle region. So in the region, I still need one, three, seven, and nine. And I have three and seven in row five already. So that's a one, nine pair, which makes these guys three and seven. And I can't really do anything more with all of this. This is all kind of entangled at this point. So I've got to move elsewhere in the puzzle to make further progress. So what looks restricted to me at this point? So I could look maybe at these corner regions. That looks kind of promising. In this region, I still need one, two, five, and six. I have a five here and I have a five here. Okay, so there's a hidden five in the region. Five can't go in any of these cells, so it must go here. These are gonna be one, two, and six, and I have a two and six there, so that's a naked one. And then there's a six here, so that's going to be a naked two. That makes this a six. The one here is going to resolve all of that. And that's going to dis disentangle everything down the middle three regions and take care of all of that for me. I love that I still haven't worked out this three, four. I find that kind of thing to be extremely satisfying. So now I need a four and an eight there, okay? And here I need a three, seven, and nine to finish the region. Three can't go in those cells because of these threes. So there's my three. The nine gives me a seven and a nine. In these cells, I need a five, which will have to go here because of the five there. And then I also need a six, eight pair, which is resolved by the six and eight in the row and the rows. I need a seven and nine to finish this region. Those will go there and there because of the nine up here. And I need a four and a seven to finish that row. Now, if I look at this row, I need a one, a three, and a nine. These can't be ones, so those are three nine pair. And actually, I know which way around those go. Finish this column off, finish this column off. I need a three, four, and five. And I think this is finally my path to figuring out how this three, four goes. So I have three and five in this row. That makes this a four, three, four, and five. Beautiful. So these are gonna be three, eight, and nine. So there's an eight, there's a three and a nine. 
Here I need a seven and eight, okay. Here I need a one, and these are going to be a two, six pair. And that is how you solve Gasparilla by James Sinclair. Ignore my, uh, my solve time there. That was a lot of me rambling about how cool James is and how you should all go support him on a sub stack. Go check his stuff out. He's going to be around for, I believe, one more rotation and possibly more in the future. We've been really happy to have him. I think he's it, him coming in as a guest setter has been a real asset to the team. So thank you, James, and thank you all for watching. I hope you really enjoyed that, and I will catch you next time.